Day five of the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia, and I am Adrian from Rabona TV, and this is World Cup Daily. Welcome, sit back, enjoy yourself, as I take you through everything that happened today. Everything you need to know, all the interesting stats, and more. You don't even need to watch the World Cup. I've got you, man. I'm like those Mexican fans that brought a cardboard cutout of their friend along to Russia when his wife said that he couldn't go along. That, my friends, was a stretch in order to include a little tidbit for you. But anyways, let's get started. The morning kicked off with Sweden taking on South Korea, or Korea Republic, in perhaps not the most looked forward to match of the day, but it's the World Cup, so you never know where you're going to get your entertainment from. Unfortunately, if you're a fan of Korea, or just a neutral, this wasn't the most entertaining match, as Sweden dominated pretty much throughout. And that's not to say that Sweden were particularly good. Well, they were better than South Korea, of course, but both teams lacked quality, especially in finishing. In fact, neither team was able to even attempt a shot until 20 minutes in. Also, Korea didn't even have a single shot on target throughout the match, while their defensive tactic basically just looked like desperation. They were forced into making crazy sliding shot blocks, etc. due to their poor positioning, and their keeper, Jo Hyun Woo, had to stand on his head. He made three saves on the night, only three, but a couple of them were from point blank range. The one meaningful thing that Hyungmin Son did in this match was bolt down the pitch with the ball, but then seemingly turned into the Travolta meme as he stood there waiting for his teammates to join him in the attack. As for Sweden, they'll be disappointed that they didn't finish off more of their chances, especially a couple that, as I said earlier, were from point blank and were begging to be put away. They got the breakthrough in the 65th minute after VAR deemed that Kim Min Woo brought down Victor Clayson, and again, it was the right call, so a point in favor of VAR there. Captain, and later the man of the match, Andrea Grunkvist, stepped up to the spot and converted coolly, giving Sweden the sole goal they needed in order to overcome the South Koreans, and win their first World Cup opening match in 60 years. The last time was when they hosted the Cup in 1958. Funnily enough, that was the last time that Italy didn't make the World Cup, so all of these coincidences mean that Sweden will win it all this year, considering Sweden have taken Italy's spot in this World Cup. And with that, we can take a look at the table for the standings in Group F, and you'll want to savor this one while it lasts. Sweden are currently at the top of the group alongside Mexico, with South Korea and Germany at the bottom. From there, we moved on to Group G, with Panama making their World Cup debut against Belgium. Their fellow debutants, Iceland, did well to get a draw against Argentina, so how would the little CONCACAF team fare? Well, in the first 45 minutes, they fared quite well, actually. It would be a stretch to say that they were the better team, as they didn't have a single shot on target and had less than 40% of the possession. That being said, they looked decent on the ball. They looked alright defensively, and they made things very difficult for Belgium. A pretty poor Belgium side in the first half to be honest with you. Because Belgium, on the other hand, looked sluggish and were guilty of banging balls up the field without any real plan of attack. When you list the players on the pitch, Dries Mertens, Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard, Yana Carrasco, etc., you picture fast-paced, incisive passing and moving. And Belgium were far from that. Again, their tactics seem to have not improved much when they've gone from Mark Wilmots to Roberto Martinez. Their game plan seems to go as far as Let's see how many of these talented players we can fit on the pitch at the same time and hope for the best. It's not great, and it seems a waste considering the talent they boast, as they tend to rely upon individual moments of magic as opposed to crushing their opposition as a team. But two minutes into the second half, one of those individual moments of magic came by way of Dries Mertens, whose failed cross found its way back to him, and he hit it on the half volley beautifully into the far corner. Stunning goal. We've seen some good ones in this tournament so far. With that goal, Mertens became the first Belgian player since his old coach, Mark Wilmots, to score in two separate World Cup tournaments. From there, the Belgians were much faster and showed a lot more attacking intent. For one, they started to utilize Lukaku some more, a guy who only had seven touches of the ball in the first half, and their wide men actually felt like running with the ball and taking it to the Panamanian defenders, instead of just hitting long balls forward but it didn't last too long, as Panama found themselves with good opportunities to score on a couple of occasions following that first Belgian goal. Not much happened to the match chance-wise until the 67th minute when Kevin De Bruyne played a beautifully driven cross with the outside of his foot and Belgium's record goal scorer Romelu Lukaku scored his first of the tournament, which was his 37th for Belgium and ensured that he has scored for Belgium in the last three major tournaments now. 
Lukaku doubled his tally just under 10 minutes later when Hazard played Lukaku through and he dinked it over the keeper to make the scoreline 3-0 and it was starting to look more like a Belgium versus Panama scoreline or an expected scoreline. No offense to Panama though, of course, I realize this is their first World Cup, etc, etc. But 3-0 was the final score in this one, as Belgium didn't look overly impressive besides the moments in which they had scored. When they were scoring goals, they looked good. Because otherwise, they looked as if they struggled to get into their attack properly. But despite that, they were unbeaten in their last 20 matches, with their last loss coming in September of 2016 against Spain. But something just seems off with Belgium, and you gotta think that when they reach the latter parts of this tournament and face bigger teams, how will they do? Hard to say after one match, of course, but I don't know, something seems off. Belgium's top rivals in Group G, England, started their World Cup campaign against Tunisia. I liked England's young lineup, and they had only 248 caps between them, which is the least any English team has boasted since 1962. England's attack looked rapid from the start, with the likes of Kane, Sterling, Lingard and Ali all swarming the Tunisian box, with Lingard forcing a big save out of Tunisian keeper Mouez Hassan very early. And I feel bad for Hassan, as he later hurt himself and eventually had to come out after just 14 minutes. But before his 14 minutes of fame were up, he made his mark on the match with two big saves. However, he couldn't keep England off the score sheet for long, as John Stone's bullet header was saved by Hassan, but Captain Kane was on hand to put away the rebound. Later in the match, however, a stray arm from Kyle Walker found the face of Tunisian winger Fakhradine Ben Youssef, and a penalty was awarded. The eighth of the tournament! For Jani Sassi, who has one of the best last names in the World Cup of names, blasted it low and hard past Pickford to level the match at one apiece. England continued to have the better of the chances in the match, as Pickford didn't have much to do besides attempt to save the penalty. But the three Lions were wasteful. They definitely had a penalty shout a few minutes after Tunisia converted theirs, when Harry Kane was wrestled to the ground. For me, that was more of a penalty than the Tunisian penalty, but hey, I'm not the one in the VAR booth. In the second half, again Kane was wrestled to the ground without the Tunisian defender even knowing where the ball was, and again, there was no call. But for the most part in the second half, it was a total dud. After starting the match so brilliantly, England went back to being boring in the second half and made it a little too easy for Tunisia. Then, the 91st minute came around and Harry Kane came to the rescue once again. In his first World Cup match, Harry Kane scored his first goal for England at a major tournament, after just 11 minutes. Then at the opposite end of the match, he scored his second on what was his World Cup debut, taking his tally to 15 and 25 appearances for England. And so, England ended up being the deserving winners in the end. Credit to Tunisia though, they almost had a huge result over the line, but just fell short. With that said, the standings in Group G are as follows. Belgium of course lead following their big 3-0 win. England is in second on three points as well, with Tunisia and Panama both on zero points. Alright, now, tomorrow's matches shall be exciting as we get to finally see a very balanced Group H take to the pitch, as well as the hosts back in action. First up will be Colombia taking on Japan. Japan of course changed their coach recently and haven't had the best results coming into this tournament. Their last match was a success however, as they beat Paraguay 4-2, a fellow South American opposition. But prior to that, they lost three in a row against Switzerland, Ghana, and the Ukraine. Colombia beat France back in March, but since then, we're unconvincing. Two nil-nil draws against Australia and Egypt don't exactly instill a ton of confidence in the team, but it's not as if Colombia is lacking in talent. It could be a close one, but I think that Colombia will do enough to get the three points. Then, Poland faced a very stern task in squaring up with Senegal, largely considered to be one of the strongest African teams at this tournament, and why not? With the likes of Sadio Mane, Khalidou Koulibaly, Idrissa Gueye, Sheikh Kouyaté, and more, they will be really difficult. Poland have a very strong squad themselves that made easy work of qualification, plus Robert Lewandowski was the top scorer in European qualifying with 16 goals. Now, Poland did lose to Nigeria back in March, but since then went on to get wins against South Korea and Lithuania, and a draw against Chile. And finally, we'll see if Russia can replicate their form from their massive 5-0 win in the opening match of the World Cup as they take on Egypt, who are just minutes away from stealing a draw against Uruguay. I think that people were wrong to write off Russia so early as they showed that they do have some talented attackers. Mind you, that Saudi backline was absolutely brutal, but the Russian defenders were barely tested and if Mo Salah does play, as the rumors say that he will, then they will certainly have their hands full. Egypt really needs a win to be back up in contention for the knockout round, while Russia can all but secure their place with a victory. Okay, 
Five days of World Cup action are finished. We have many more days coming, so don't be sad. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get your updates from me every evening or whenever you choose to do your YouTubing. I'm Adrian, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.